Barnaby Jones, starring Buddy Epson. Also starring Lee Merriweather. With guest stars Leslie Nielsen, Marge Doucet. Tonight's episode, The Killing Defense. Mrs. Anthony, could we get just one of you kissing your husband? Absolutely. I may never stop kissing him. How did it feel being a free man? Oh, great. Never felt better. Great. Mr. Anthony, uh, can I ask you, since the jury has found you innocent, could you care to take a guess just who did steal the Markova jewels? Oh, no. I'm just grateful the jury exercised their best judgment. Of course, I owe a lot to my counsel, Mr. Brendan, here. Counselor, did you have any doubt about the outcome? No, my client had an airtight alibi. No other verdict that the jury could have reached. Mr. That's Anthony, all what, right. are you, what are your plans now? Oh, we've got a lot to do. Honey, yeah, the the second 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 honey. Honey. I don't even know. Oh, I have the slightest idea. What, what about now? A little blood, or are you planning on right back to business? We've got a lot of time to make up. That is for us to decide. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. Is that, darling? Yes. Baby. Look, we're home free oh. with a million dollars worth of stones. Oh. Get in the car, yeah. What are you doing here? Well, can't you guess, Doug? What do you got in the box? Oh, now, wait a minute. Well, why do you think I worked so hard to get you acquitted? You know, from the first time we talked, I knew that you were guilty. You remember when I said we'd settle my fee later? Well, we're gonna settle it now. Listen, Brandon, we can make a deal. All right, now. 
that's it. The worst is over. What are you going to do with him? I'll take him back in the woods and bury him. Now you go on back to town. No need for you to stay around here. Bill Everett of the insurance company uh, told me about your loss and asked me to see if I could help you since he couldn't. Yes. One of my attempts at thrift was to let the insurance on the jewel collection lapse. I'm afraid it was a very foolish economy. I understand you just took the jewels out of your safe deposit box because you're going to sell them. Oh, thank you. Yes, uh, an appraiser had made an appointment to examine them. The day he was to come, I, I had a visitor, the son of a dear friend. That's Douglas Anthony, the young man that uh, they found innocent today. Yes, he said he was in desperate need of money and had some scheme to use my name and photograph for a promotion that would make him wealthy. <laughs> I turned him down, of course. And then the appraiser phoned, saying that he would not be able to come until the next day. I spoke to him about the jewels. Douglas was sitting there where you are now, Mr. Jones, taking in every word I said. Then he knew that the jewelry was going to be in your apartment overnight. It was Douglas. There's not the slightest doubt in my mind. Seems to me the young man's pretty lucky to have been acquitted when you're so positive. Oh, luck had nothing to do with it. Douglas claimed he was in Palm Springs at the same time that I saw him here in my apartment. Douglas and his lawyer presented witnesses. And I could see that the jury thought I was just a senile old woman. Hello. Good morning. Did I wake you up? Oh, Ed. Yes. Well, I couldn't get to sleep last night until I took a pill, and I think it really did the job. I was going to call you. That there was a detective named Jones last night that called here wanting to talk to Doug. What did you tell him? Well, that he was out of town on business, and I didn't know when he'd be back. That's good. That's what you tell anyone who calls for him. And eventually, they'll give up. Yes, I suppose they will. What is it? You, you, uh, you sound kind of down. Well, how should I sound after what we had to do to Doug yesterday? Now, listen. You forget about that. Thing. You think about the future. Don't you think about yesterday? Oh, sure. Except I'm not looking forward to the next few weeks. I wish we didn't have to wait. I wish we could be for Europe right away. Everything has gone according to plan. Now, let's not spoil it by getting over-anxious. We'll just wait a month, and we'll leave separately. I'll go to Amsterdam, and I'll, I'll sell the jewels there. You go to Spain. Then we'll meet at the Costa del Sol somewhere and have a long, lazy vacation. Yeah. You're right. Okay. okay. Hold it a minute, will you? I'm sorry, Mr. Brennan, but there's a Mr. Jones waiting to see you. He says he's investigating the Markova jewel theft. All right, send him in, but tell him I can only spare a minute or two. Hello, Gail. Look, I'll call you back later, all right? I love you. Mr. Jones? Mr. Brandon, I sure do appreciate you taking your time to see me. Not at all. Won't you sit down? Thank you. My secretary says that you're... On an investigation? Are you connected with the police? Well, I'm private, but I hope that doesn't cause you to pull in the welcome mat. It, it happens sometimes. No, no, of course not. If I can be of any help in recovering that unfortunate woman's jewels, fine. But I probably I don't see how I can help you. Well, I was hoping that you might be able to put me in touch with your client, Mr. Anthony. I call his wife, but uh, she says she's out of town on business. Oh, he is. I'm afraid he didn't tell me. May I ask you why you want to talk with him? Well, I just want to fill in some of the blank spaces from the night of the robbery. Blank spaces? 
Yes, it's my understanding that uh, Mr. Anthony and his wife were in Palm Springs the night of the theft. That's right. And witnesses place him there in his hotel room at the time that the burglary was taking place here in Los Angeles. Well, I thought that was kind of funny because Mrs. Markova told me that Anthony was desperately in need of money. I thought it was strange that he would depart on a vacation to a plush resort just at that time. <laughs> well, you've heard of live now and pay later, haven't you? You've heard of credit cards, haven't you, Mr. Jones? I sure have, and you've heard of uh, setting up a perfect alibi, haven't you, Mr. Brandon? You are aware, Mr. Jones, that my client was found innocent of the burglary charge. I'd hate to think that you were harassing him. I wouldn't harass anyone for the whole world, Mr. Brandon. I'm just interested in getting Mrs. Markova her jewels back. Well, I'm sure you will. You seem like a very persistent man. Now, if uh, you'll excuse me. Oh, sure. Well, I guess persistent is the right word. I have a system that I use in cases like these. It seems to work pretty well. What's that? I just keep shaking all the trees till something falls out. Good day, Mr. Brandon. Barnaby Jones, I spoke to you on the phone yesterday evening about getting in touch with your husband. Oh, yes, I remember. Have you heard from him? I'm afraid not, Mr. Jones, and I, I'm... You'll have to forgive me, but I'm on my way to the cleaners and the hairdressers. Well, the least I can do is give you a hand with it. No, it's... No, it's no trouble at all. My car's right over here. Oh, your husband has his own car. No, we just have the one. Well, he must have gone on a short trip if he didn't take the car. He flew, Mr. Jones, you know, on an airplane. I drove him to the airport myself yesterday. Oh, what airline? You have to remember? It was KBL, I believe. Now may I have my cleaning. <laughs> Standing here visiting with you, I forgot it was yours. <laughs> I'll put it in the car. Thank you. You know, there's one thing I think I'd put on my list of things to do today, uh, go to a car wash. I will. It's like red clay. Only a couple of spots out of town where you can find it around here. Really? I'm sorry, I haven't the faintest idea what you're talking about. It's like the same kind of clay you got on your sweater here. Maybe I got it from the car. Now, really, Mr. Jones, you're making me late. <laughs> You know, I think I'll run a test on this in my lab to see if I really know what I'm talking about. You know, I like to kind of check on myself when I make a guess out of where a certain kind of soil is coming from. Oh? Thank you very much for your time, Ms. Anthony, and uh, drive safely. Hi. Something wrong? Well, the detective came by this morning. Who, Barnaby Jones? He's still looking for Doug. Yeah. By the office early this morning, too. He gets around pretty good that fall. Ed, he took a sample of mud from the car. A sample of what? Well, there was mud all over the car from that wet place in the road where Doug is buried. Why didn't you get the car washed? I was on my way when he showed up. What does he want the sample for? Well, he said he was going to run a test in his lab. He thinks there's it's a kind of clay you can only find in one or two places around here. Well, seems I've underestimated Mr. Jones. Ed, I think you should do something if he finds out where the mud is from and goes to the police. Don't worry about it. I'll handle it. Just get the car washed. Doesn't know anything. He's just fishing, that's all. I hope you're right. I'll be at home right now taking his uh, afternoon nap. I read the transcript of the Anthony trial. You made a very good witness for the defense, Miss Craig. Call me Doty. Everybody does in Palm Springs. I just told the jury what I saw that night. I understand you were serving drinks in the bar the night the Anthonys were in here. 
Yes, I distinctly remember them because they were having a fight. Oh, a real fight with uh, name calling and screaming? Well, maybe not that bad. I mean, they weren't loud enough to get thrown out or anything. I understand you saw Mrs. Anthony leave later that night. Yeah, about three hours later. I was knocking off to go home, and she came storming out of the hotel. She got in her car, and she drove away. <gasps> Boy, was she ever in a huff. What time was that? Let me see. Um, I was off about 9 that night. A few minutes later, I guess. Thank you very much, Dodie. Is that it? Unless you can uh, tell me where I might find Chris, the bellboy. Yeah, he's usually over there through that door. Yeah. Mr. Anthony phoned room service a little past midnight. I'll tell you why I remember, because I thought we were going to have to send out for the particular brand of scotch that he wanted, but as it turned out, we had a spare bottle of it in the bar. What kind of scotch was it? Glenn Murray. So you took it up to his room, then what? Well, I knocked, but then I noticed that he left the door open for me, so I went in the room. Wasn't he there? Oh, sure. He just got out of the shower. I saw him standing in the bathroom. He had his robe on. Thanks a lot. Oh, you're welcome. Anytime, Mr. Jones. Operator, I want to make a collect call. Area code 213-555-7650. Barnaby Jones' office, may I help you? Uh, yes, operator, I'll accept the charges. Oh, Barnaby. Yeah, I just got back from the airport. KBL Airline has no record of having sold Doug Anthony a ticket anywhere. And neither do any of the other airlines. Well, now, isn't that interesting? Have you had any luck down there? No, it's kind of dead down here. If Doug did steal those jewels, he had a range to be two places at the same time, looks like. I might as well come on back to L.A. You know, you're hanging around here. All right. I'll see you in a couple of hours. You're early. I said after nine. Yeah, well, I guess I got anxious. You mentioned money, and it's been a little lean out there. That's right. You get the money after the little job I got in mind. What's that? Right up your alley. Simple burglary. Busting? Uh, I don't know. Listen, I didn't collect for that last rap I got you off. Now, you owe me. I'll forget about it, and I'll throw in a couple of hundred. Otherwise, Sam, I just got to collect. Well, what do I grab? You don't grab anything. It's just a little transplanting. Take it easy, friend. Just let the lady go and walk on by. Get rid of it. Sure. Come on in.
Police, emergency. all about. I wish I knew. Because you sure can't tell us now. Well, it's you again. Miss Anthony, I hate to be a nuisance, but I think we ought to have a little talk. Well, it seems as though my day just can't begin until you put in some sort of an appearance. Still about Doug. Sure is. Did you talk to him since I was here yesterday? No, I still haven't heard from him, Mr. Jones. He's probably deep in trying to promote some business deal. That seems odd. It is? And you don't know Doug. Seems odd because uh, somebody broke into my lab last night, and the only thing that interested him was a soil sample I took off your car. I think he was trying to make a switch. I'm afraid I don't understand. Well, as far as I recall, you're the only person that knew about the samples, and if you didn't tell anybody... All right, Mr. Jones. Doug did phone me last night, but he didn't tell me where he was calling from, and that's the truth. I have no idea where he is or what he's doing. But you told him I took the clay off your car and mentioned that I was going to run some tests? Yes. And as a matter of fact, he got extremely upset, and he, and he hung up very abruptly, and that's the last I've heard from him. I guess it was Doug who broke into your place? Nope. We got the man who did that. Uh, he hasn't given us any information, though. He's dead. What's going on, Mr. Jones? I really don't understand any of it. Are you sure it was Doug you spoke to on the phone? Of course, yes. Why would you ask? I don't know. I'm getting kind of a funny feeling about Mr. Anthony, like uh, something happened to him, an accident or something. An accident? Yes, when you've been in this business long as I have, you begin to trust feelings like that. Of course, I could be wrong this time. Anyway, thank you, Ms. Anthony, and uh, if you should happen to hear from Doug, give me a call. It's all right, I'll find my way out. Thank you. And in view of the court's current position in, uh, in this regard... You want me to get there? No, it's a private line. Hello? Now, hold it a minute, will you? Why don't you start transcribing that now, and I'll finish it later. Gail? Yeah? What was that about Jones? He was just here, and Ed, he suspects. Suspects what? About Doug. I, mean, I told him everything that we agreed upon, but I don't think he bought it. In fact, I'm sure he didn't. All right. If he's beginning to suspect what really happened to Doug, then we're just going to have to resurrect Doug for him. How? Well, that'll be easy. Doug has already shown us how with that recording he made. It'll mean another trip to uh, Palm Springs for you, though. Do you mind? I guess I don't have any choice. I just wish I were meeting you somewhere instead. Yeah, well, it won't be long, Gail. You have found out nothing about who he was. Then. No, no. I haven't heard anything. There's my Oh, your daughter-in-law was just telling me what happened last night. Have the police identified him yet? Yeah, Sam Mason. Long record, burglary, assault, you name it. 
Well, how does he tie in? I don't know, but I've been making some inquiries. Who his cellmates were, who his old partners were, who his uh, defense attorney was. I want you to follow up on that, Betty, when we get back to the office. There is still no trace of what happened to my jewel. No, ma'am, but I think that when we locate Doug Anthony, we'll have come a long way toward getting your jewels back. Then you do believe it was Douglas who took them, that I was not imagining what I saw? That's right. It's what other people imagined they saw that interests me. For example, how Doug could be in two places at the same time. That took some acting. You've known Doug all his life, haven't you? Since he was a few years old. Did he ever have any theatrical experience? Uh, you mean on the stage? Yeah. Uh -huh. No, not that I am aware. Where did he go to school? It was in the East, uh, one of the Ivy League colleges. A men's college? I seem to remember it was. Well, what could that possibly have to do with this? I'll know more about that after Betty calls all the Ivy League college clubs in town and goes over the yearbook. You do plan on telling me what I'm looking for, don't you? Of course. Doug Anthony's school day. There's some bags in the back. Would you get them for me? Uh, I'd be glad to. Thank you. Oh, yes, it just happens that room 236 is vacant, Mrs. Anthony. Good. My husband particularly wanted the same room. He's rather sentimental. Uh, Mr. Anthony is going to join you, then? Yes, he'll be arriving later this evening. Oh, that's fine. It's nice to have you both back with us. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you. Leave it if I'm in the shower. Thanks a lot. All right, Mr. Anthony. service.
Did you? Yes, and I'm with him now. We're in that hotel in Palm Springs. Palm Springs? Why didn't you call me earlier? Oh, I couldn't get away from him until now. He's acting very strange, and, and he's drinking a lot. It's four o'clock. I can get there by daybreak. All right, but please hurry. He says he wants me to leave the country with him for good. I told him I wouldn't go, but he says he's going to make me. Agree to do anything he wants. Understand? Stall until I get there. Jones, come in. I'm so glad you're here. We had a terrible fight right after I talked to you, and I'm afraid I just couldn't stall him. He do that? When I said I wouldn't go with him. He does have the jewels, Mr. Jones. He's had them all along. And now he's gone, and so are the... Jewels, I'm afraid. <laughs> so I went into the room. Miss Anthony was in bed, asleep. Mr. Anthony was in the bathroom. Just got out of the shower. The guy really has a thing for midnight shower. Yeah. Did you see him? Oh, yeah, sure. You know, he was drying his hair. Towel over his head. Back yeah. to you? That's right. Well, then you never got to see his face, not even in the mirror. You know something? Come to think of it, I didn't. Not really, but that's because the mirror was all steamed up. The liquor you brought up, he had a sign for it, didn't he? No, no, I, he left the exact change for me out on the dresser. In the last year or so, uh, how many times did they stay here? Oh, I'd say maybe a half a dozen times. But you know, you get so you can really remember the ones that tip big, you know what I mean? And Mr. Anthony always pays for his room service in cash? No. Now, now that you mention it, they always sign for their orders except these last two times. Mr. Jones, long distance call. You can take it in here, sir. Thank you. The blue phone on the desk. Thank you. Hello, Barnaby Jones speaking. Oh, hello, Betty. What's going on? I thought you'd want to know about this right away. It's about the man who was killed the other night after he broke into the lab, Sam Mason. Barnaby, the last time he went to trial, almost two years ago, he was defended by Edward Brendan, Doug Anthony's lawyer. Mr. Brendan. Well, now, doesn't that take the long arm of coincidence and wrench it right out of the socket? I sure hope Mrs. Markova wasn't mistaken when she said Anthony went to an Ivy League school. She wasn't. Here he is, right here in the yearbook. Douglas Anthony, class of 57. Doug Anthony. You know, unless I'm mistaken, this school has an annual undergraduate show which some of the fellas dress up like girls and do dance numbers. Here it is. What about this guy? Could be. Douglas Anthony. That's how he did it. That's how he got out of the hotel and up here to L.A. while everybody swore it was Gail who took off after the fight, didn't he? He made himself up to look like Gail. 
And then Gail stayed behind in the room to make sure everyone thought he was still there. And he was a good enough actor to get away with it. Well, it tells us how he did it, but it sure doesn't tell us where he is. I think he's disappeared permanently. I think it happened right after the acquittal. He's dead? Is that what you say? I think he went right from the courthouse, out to where the jewels were hidden, and unsuspectingly led his wife and her boyfriend there. I think he's buried someplace beside a muddy road right out of town. Well, then that scene that Gail staged at the hotel last night was to throw you off. Make me think he was still alive. Well, it all makes sense, but I sure don't know how you're going to prove any of it. You know, if I'm right about all this, Brendan and Gail have been having a lot of fun playing games with me. And I think it's only fair that I do a little game playing right back at them. Miss Anthony, nice to see you again. Thank you. Well, it looks like you've got over that ruckus down at Palm Springs. Oh, yes, I'm feeling much better, thank you. What do you have? Uh, a daiquiri, please. Lady, we'll have a daiquiri, please. Mr. Jones, when you called this morning, you said you may have a possible lead as to Doug's whereabouts. Yes, I, I thought I did, but now I'm not so sure. A contact of mine in New York called, said he had seen somebody answering your husband's description in a hotel there. Well, Doug could be in New York. He has friends there. What's my name, Miss Anthony? Uh, Gee, isn't that your husband's lawyer down there? Yes, I believe that's Mr. Brandon. Looks like he's thinking of giving up bachelor life. Bachelor life? Yes, I've seen him in here with the same girl every day for the past week now. that you must get many requests for public appearances, Mr. Brendan. A, a man with your record of courtroom victories. Oh, well, <laughs> that's very flattering. But really, a public appearance at this time would uh, be out of the question for a while. Well, at least I try. Were well, you ready? Would you excuse me for a moment? Yes, certainly. She is attractive, isn't she? Yes. What's the matter, Miss Anthony? Did the bartender make you drink too sour? Excuse me, Mr. Jones. rather hoping it would last until Paris, but now I don't think so. You're going to Paris? Yes. My boyfriend has to go there on business, and he's asked me to come along. That's the man that you're sitting with? Oh, yes. Did you see him? Isn't he handsome? <laughs> I'm going to try and get him to propose to me. Who knows? Paris is the city of lovers. <laughs> I send her in. important you're coming here like this. I just thought that you should be the first to know that our plans have changed. What? What are you talking about? I mean that you and I are on a transatlantic flight tonight. Together. Are you crazy, Gail? No. What's gotten into you? It's just that I'm tired of waiting, and there really isn't any reason for us to hang around here anymore, is there? Have you forgotten about Jones? No. But I think that last trip to Palm Springs convinced him, and as you say, I... I don't think he's going to go around chasing his own tail forever. Well, nothing's changed, has it? You do still love me. Of course I do. 
But what's, uh, what's happened to all the plans we made before? Then we'll leave tonight. Otherwise, I'll go to the police, and I will tell them how you planned everything, and how you killed Doug. I mean it. Well, all right. Fine. It doesn't make any difference. We'll leave tonight. There's one other thing. I want the jewels now. Well, I don't have the jewels here in the office. They're in the safety deposit box in the bank. Then let's go get them. Oh, that would be fine, the two of us going in together. No, I'll get the jewels and I'll bring them to you tonight and you can carry them on your lap all the way to Amsterdam if you like. Is there anything else? What's gotten into you, Gail? Come on. Come on. school, I had a professor who really knew his stuff. He said, two rules you follow if you want to succeed in law. Always get your criminal fees in advance and never make love to a client. I'm sorry I didn't stick to the rules, Gail. Are you telling me that we shouldn't have fallen in love? No. No, I'm telling you that you shouldn't have fallen in love. Love makes women stupid. Just how stupid I didn't know until I heard you this afternoon threatening to go to the police. You never intended to take me to Europe, did you? That might have worked out, too, if you'd been able to do what I told you. But apparently that's not going to happen now. I'll change. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry, Gail. We're going to have to split up this partnership, and there's only one way to do that. I just figured that Doug came back and finished off what he's supposed to have done in Palm Springs. No, please. You ready? Jones. Drop it in the chair right behind you, nice and easy. Officer, uh, I need assistance. 4303 beam in a prowl car. Officer, are you still there? Make that one prowl car and one ambulance. This emerald necklace is said to have been worn by Catherine the Great. Lovely, isn't it? They all are. I've never seen anything so beautiful. And much too valuable to be entrusted to an old woman. Thank you, Mr. Jones, for letting me see them one last time. Will you be so good as to deliver them to the bank for me? Oh, sure, I'd be glad to. Miss Markova, I bet you don't get out of this apartment too much. I mean, outside of going to the park. Oh, well, I, I have a few friends who sometimes visit. You know, Betty has found a cute little Russian restaurant out in the valley. How about you joining us for supper tonight? 
Just the three of you. Oh, yes, that's a wonderful idea, please. Oh, no, really, I, I, I don't even have the proper clothes anymore. Listen, if you walk into that restaurant wearing this around your neck, nobody's going to know what else you're wearing. Come on, 7 o'clock, we'll pick you up, okay? Okay. <laughs>